So I'm sounding way better than before. Um, so what I want to pick your brain about or talk to, to you a little bit is something I'm, uh, we are working on, uh, which is not related to the RT patch set. So we think about how you can do, how you can help users or developers to actually find problems in, in, in systems. So uh, I thought about pattern-based things, and that involves big data. So now let a kernel developer think about big data. What could go wrong? Actually, everything. Because I started with a very naive approach. Just create gazillion of traces and then reduce the space. I was able to reduce the space, but I got roughly a gazillion of unique patterns back. So the idea was what I wanted to achieve in the long run is actually um, having pattern recognition in some form and then document what the pattern means. What is this? What are you looking at? So, no, we're not doc starting to document a gazillion of different patterns. So I estimated we would be done with the set I had somewhere in 2099. I might be off a year or two, but that's roughly the time frame it takes. So I had to go back and revisit my approach to that. Actually, I talked to people who understand how big data mining works. And I said, yeah, you really were naive. So you have to split it into sub pattern. You have to tell the data miner what you're actually looking for. So that makes the f a little way, 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 way easier. And so I think that documentation of the sub patterns is possible. And then when you look at something, you probably always see a combination of this sub pattern and then you need tools to stitch them together and so you get the coherent information out of it. So basically what we're trying to do is to come up with abstract descriptions of what's happening. So first when the task is woken up, why is it not, not going on the CPU? So we're just looking between wake up and switch, context switch. So there might be something else which is higher priority, there might be an interrupt interfering, there might be preemption disabled for a very long period of time and things like this. You can see that from traces. And then if you go further down from context switch to going out to user space, what can go wrong? You can get preempted once more, you can run into a lock and block on something, and so there's a lot of variance to that scheme, but we can reduce that to really a, a, a comparable small number of, of patterns and then go and document the patterns and say, okay, this happened. Um, you might look into that. It's not going to tell you what, where exactly the problem lies, but it actually tries to help you to understand what the problem is. So that's where I really wanted to talk to you about and uh, pick your brains. Whether you think that's something worthwhile to pursue or would that be something you wished you had two weeks ago when you were staring at the trace and didn't figure out what the hell it means. So one idea I have as well, uh, what it could do is um, kind of um, um, warning system. So, so if, you, if you just have stuff running in your test lab and you watch the traces and, um, and analyze the traces which you generate and you know there's something you really want to avoid on your way back to user space like lock contention or things like that, uh, you can actually do that as a kind of, oh, it's not failing, but it shouldn't be there. So I have to look why it, it, this is happening and, and that is happening. So that could be something, failure prediction uh, mode as well. So, yeah, uh, that's, I have nothing working right now. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, I have some 
horrible scripts for that. Uh, but so it's we are in a, at a state where we uh, try to come up with a proper storage format for the patterns. Uh, uh, we can actually identify the sub pattern thing and find uh, exp places in a, in a trace where we where we have the, the explanation so and then I mean the the, the other stuff where, where we then search in a large trace for something I mean it's always going to be something oh, oh, oh where is the longest latency from wake up to uh, back to user space for a particular task and then you can get the information what what happened on the way from wake up to that thing or it, you can even extend this, the, the thing up to back in kernel space so when is the next when your computation finally ends when you go back and wait for the next period for example so uh, I mean this kind of search can be done uh, so that's where I wanted to pick your brains. Is that useful? Would that be useful? Would you wish that it had been there before? Yes. <laughs> uh, especially for post-mortem analysis, when after rest of uh, things have crashed, having some, uh, something automated to look at traces, at least to weed out the uh, common ones. Uh, I spend pretty much 90% of my time looking at traces to realize that this is something I've seen before. Uh, because it hasn't been fixed, so um, I have some scripts now, which... Uh, yeah, I have, guess have everybody who has to deal with traces has a gazillion of scripts. Yeah, so basically you throw some regex at it and you do some poorly implemented token-based yeah. whatever analysis. And right. having something more comprehensible, a um, bit more... Um, with a bit more finesse than what my Python skills has would be a tremendous help. So yeah. I would be very much interested in helping yeah, so you with so that. The, so the idea is what we want to do is basically once we have established the way how we are doing that, so create that data, pattern database and make it open so people can actually look at it uh, and help with the documentation and things like that. And extend it, of course. Basically, uh, internally for the energy washer thing, we developed uh, tools that basically uh, coming from traces, we, par we parse the trace data, we convert those in uh, Panda frames, his uh, Python uh, stuff is basically creating database of what's happening in the trace. And then basically we use that data to do uh, different sort of stuff. So if, for example, you can plot any signal, for example, no utilization signal or the task, you can plot that, that thing or you can plot uh, know, your frequencies. And uh, actually on top of that, we actually also build uh, its uh, behavior analysis tool. So you can actually, there is kind of uh, uh, the way to specify, I don't know, I want to check that this task didn't exceed, I don't know, 10% of uh, utilization across the trace. So right. you can actually create like regression testing. I don't know if it's something that you can be uh, interested in. Of. Yeah, Look sure. I mean, if it's it's related and and or kind of related, we certainly want to look at that. Well, yeah, how are you doing that? Send you a link. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other ideas people have how we could tackle that? Oh, by the way, the tool is called Lisa. It's available on Lisa. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll find it, or I get back to you. I know how to find you. <laughs> so, Paul, you had something. There's been a, depending on what you're trying to do, there's been some attempts in various places to try to map from code patterns to all sorts of things. Um, a lot of them have been less sophisticated and have um, kind of had a shelf life. So they've worked for a while and then people have invented smarter bugs that avoid the patterns but are still bugs. Right. Um, so is this intended to be kind of an ongoing thing? Yeah, and, I mean, once and, it's uh, out there and you, can't, you, you, okay. you, you get something where, where if you look at a, 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 an incident mm -hmm. where we have this long latency thing, right. and then you, the, 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 the pattern matching algorithm says, hey, there is something I do not even know about. Right. So that gives you a blank. Okay. So, but then it, <clears throat> the tool should be able to create an abstract description 
of this, which you can match in the next one. Mm -hmm. You integrate it into the database and somebody has to fill in the documentation for it, of course. Right. Somebody who understands it. Right. Is and that's, that's, I mean, that's the whole idea that we can extend the database over time because I'm not going to find all patterns just by running it on a gazillion of machines. Oh, no, no. Not. <laughs> oh, I can let you find the, all the patterns. Well, I you can find you all might ask I Watson found, for it. I can, I can ask all the patterns. They just won't be useful is all. <laughs> uh, is this something that, um, at what point would you be interested in me pointing various random people at it, some of whom may be useful and some of whom yeah, at, at, at the point where we actually have something which is not uh, only consisting out of a bunch of totally ugly Python scripts and shell scripts and whatever. No, you, shouldn't take it, you shouldn't take it too easy on them. No, I mean, if I stare at the stuff and get my, make, it makes my eyes bleed, I don't want to expose it to other people. Okay, let, let me know. That's why, I, that, I mean, I don't want to give other people an excuse that they can show me back their kernel patches which Fair make point. my eyes bleed again. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going there. Well, let me know when you're at that point. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be public. So, any other questions or ideas? Anyone with experience in that area? doing data mining. Thanks. Uh, in our experience, the typical thing is first you want to spot the problem, and very often it will be that you have a missed deadline. If you have a trigger there, then you can get some more tracing. Uh, you can even get uh, sometimes have a run in background an Intel PT hardware trace, and then you trigger a snapshot and take a copy of that. So once you have that, then there are various tools. Pattern matching is one of the tools. But if you have a hardware trace, you can go in the debugger and see exactly what happened. But it could be a long stretch. Another thing that is extremely interesting is, say, from the time where my period starts to the point where I actually exceeded my deadline and triggered a snapshot. Right. If you look at your uh, trace of scheduling switches and you know, priority changes and everything, if you, if you ask for a critical path analysis, and we have that in, the, in Trace Compass, the, the results usually are extremely interesting. You see exactly what, what happened and what caused what in terms of blockings, and you have just that chain of events that made it take so much time between the time where you were ready to run and the time you actually didn't finish in time. You're right. Then we also have uh, experimented with uh, pattern matching. And pattern matching indeed does uh, provide some interesting results, but then the, the patterns that we have usually are relatively simple things like you should never be, be preempted when it's your main real-time task. Uh, you should be using all the CPU. Uh, there are a number of simple patterns like that. And then all the violations, if you can pinpoint them to specific events or very short regions, we've had some success with that as well. But it's more recent work, and we have to work more on that. Right. But indeed, I believe that I mean everyone is telling us that the traces are huge and they don't want to look at every event by hand. So you need to have some interesting tools to pinpoint right. the most I mean, important stuff. I mean, most people I know have tons of horrible Perl scripts, Python scripts, uh, set an orc. I just make them up as I go along. I don't keep the stuff. Yeah, of course, because uh, you, you're mostly looking at the, t at the text based traces, so uh, you always have to do the extra regex crap for everything. Uh, yeah, no, uh, we're, f we're trying to do that on the, by on the CTF format, because uh, doing that on the text based representation is just horrible. Uh, a graphical view of the critical path, it's very nice. I know that scripts are fine and so on, but if you have a graphical interface with a graphical view of the critical path, can zoom and look. Yeah, I mean that's it's that's nice. A lot. But so so the, the the idea behind that is if you, that I want to to give people a, without having to install tra and figure out how to use Trace Compass um, uh, a, a very quick at least hint what they what they are dealing with. And if we can extend the pattern space and make it 
big enough that it covers also the more complex cases. Um, because the more complex cases are basically um, of a combination of simple patterns. So you have those, you get, you run into a lock contention five times in a row. You get migrated, preempted, run into a lock contention, whatever, any combination of all of those and some more. Um, so if we are able to, 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 to have the, these simple patterns uh, identifiable by a machine, then we can start looking at combinations because then we can say, okay, look for any combination of those and then stitch them together. And you still get out a very clear uh, description of what happens from here to here. Oh, here you got preempted, here you ran into a, a contended lock. Then the interrupt uh, came in and the handler took half an hour and then he finally re reached user space uh, where you spent a gazillion of time exceeding your timeline anyway and then came back. So kind of these things I think can be just done simple for a quick thing if you have to dig deeper, I mean that's what the traces are going to tell you and then you're lost anyway if you don't have detailed information like uh, hardware traces or function traces or whatever. But what, what we really want to look at is, especially if you do flight recording and you just keep streaming out data in a permanent, in a permanent uh, uh, way that you can actually find certain things where you do not, which you do not expect to happen or you say they shouldn't happen but maybe they happen once in a month and so, so that's more on the, on the failure prediction side I think where we can make use of that as well because that's going to give you a quick, uh, the quick uh, thing, the quick hint, oh there is actually a lot of contention in the way it only happens once in a blue moon, but it is there. So go go look for it, and then you can instrument deep. Then you have to instrument deeper and actually looking what kind of lock it is and where where you contend on and things like that. That's I mean it's not going to make uh, the stuff magically going to be very very easy and just oh yes it's file X code line number seventeen and here is uh, here is the description of the race. Great, yeah, I would lift it, um, but it's not going to happen. But it, it's meant to, to aid things, to make things a little more, a bit more easier for people. Okay, any other opinions on that? Then, whoop, let me look at the schedule, where we are, I don't know. And that does tell me what? That does tell me we're ahead of coffee break. Uh, so coffee break is supposed to be in 20 minutes, but if there's no more questions on that, I'm happy to let you out in your well-earned coffee break and we're back looking at something else which might uh, fry your brain. Uh, at least it fries my brain on a regular basis if I think about it. Uh, at 4.10 for, uh, for uh, discussing uh, problems with few as we've seen and what uh, uh, we still have to fix on the Chilip Sea side or uh, what the kernel needs to do to make Chilipsy's life easier. See you later. <laughs>